fact, there are real people with real histories and real futures. And most importantly, in the real world, there are real consequences to not getting the story straight. Ladies and gentlemen, in a world of fiction, Iran's regime pits moderates like Bouhani and Zarif against hardliners like Khamenei and Soleimani. In a world of fact, Iran under Rouhani hangs gays, jails journalists, and executes more political prisoners than ever. In a world of fiction, Iran will seek to reconcile with the United States after the nuclear deal and become a partner for solving problems in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and elsewhere in the region. In the world of fact, Iran is vowing to remain an enemy of the United States and is wreaking havoc throughout the Middle East. In a world of fiction, a richer Iran will curb its aggression, end its support for terrorism, and stop trying to annihilate Israel. In the world of fact, a richer Iran is dispatching troops and proxies throughout the region, shipping arms to Hezbollah and the Houthis, hosting Holocaust denial contests and test firing ballistic missiles inscribed with threats to wipe Israel off the map. But when it comes to blurring fact and fiction, the case of Iran's Ayatollah regime is nothing compared to the decades-long obfuscation that has marked the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. In a world of fiction, Israel is not prepared to make peace with the Palestinians. In the world of fact, six Israeli prime ministers since Oslo have tried and failed to make peace with the Palestinians, despite sweeping proposals that offered the Palestinians everything they told the world they wanted. In a world of fiction, Prime Minister Netanyahu is not prepared to negotiate with President Abbas. In the world of fact, President Abbas has avoided negotiations for the last seven years. In a world of fiction, settlements are the obstacle to peace, and Israel is ethnically cleansing the Palestinians. In the world of fact, our conflict predates the building of settlements in post-1967 Israel by 50 years. The Palestinian population in the territories captured in the Six-Day War has grown at least threefold. And those who advocate ethnic cleansing are those that insist that a future Palestine be Judenrat. In a world of fiction, Israeli soldiers are war criminals. In the world of fact, the IDF deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for the efforts its commanders make and the risks In a world of fact, the IDF deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for the efforts its commanders make and the risks its soldiers take to keep Palestinian civilians out of harm's way. In a world of fiction, it is Israel that has an extremist, brutal, and bloodthirsty society. In the world of fact, Hamas terrorists rule Gaza. Abu Mazen welcomes every drop of blood spilled in Jerusalem. Palestinian children are educated to hate Jews, and Palestinian public squares are named after mass murderers. In a world of fiction, there never was a temple on the Temple Mount, and the Jewish people are foreign colonialists in the land of Israel. In the world of fact, the Temple of Solomon was built by the son of David 3,000 years ago in Jerusalem, and what the world calls the West Bank is the same Judea and Samaria where the patriarchs of the Jewish people prayed, where the prophets of the Jewish people preached, and where the kings of the Jewish people ruled. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, confusing fact and fiction on the Palestinian issue can have real-world consequences for Israel. 
In a world of fiction, the leading powers of the world will gather together two weeks from now to help advance the peace process. In the world of fact, the leading powers of the world will unwittingly enable the Palestinians to continue avoiding negotiations. In a world of fiction, these powers will create a framework that will ultimately help Israelis and Palestinians make peace. In the world of fact, these powers, albeit with the best of intentions, will only encourage the Palestinians to continue their nearly 100-year-old campaign to destroy the one and only Jewish state. In a world of fiction, powers whose citizens live far away know better than the people of Israel what is in Israel's interests and what must be done to keep Israel safe. In the world of fact, these powers are ignoring the will of a free people who live in the most endangered democracy on earth and whose sons and daughters defend that democracy every day. Now, I think it's important to leave fiction behind and state a few facts clearly that bear repeating, particularly on the eve of the formation of a new government in Israel. The fact is that Iran remains the greatest danger to Israel and is as committed as ever to destroying Israel. Last year at the United Nations, Prime Minister Netanyahu laid out a policy based on three principles that you could unite both those who supported and opposed the nuclear deal with Iran. First, keep Iran's feet to the fire by making sure it does not violate the deal. Second, confront Iran's regional aggression. And third, dismantle Iran's terror network around the world. The international community has not yet translated those principles into policy. Among other things, such a policy would mean responding forcefully to Iran's ballistic missile tests, increasing sanctions against Iran for its support for terrorism and illegal arms transfers, and shining a spotlight on Iran's gross human rights violations. For its part, Israel will continue to work so that that policy is implemented. A second fact is that Israel remains committed to peace with the Palestinians and will continue to insist that only direct negotiations can achieve that goal. The vision of Prime Minister Netanyahu for peace remains the very same vision he laid out at Bar Ilan University. Not simply two states, but two states for two peoples, in which a demilitarized Palestinian state recognizes the Jewish state of Israel. Israel believes that the convergence of its interests with the interests of many of the Sunni Arab states provides an opportunity to help advance peace with the Palestinians, as well as broader reconciliation with the Arab world. At the same time, Israel will vigorously oppose any effort by outside parties to impose terms to resolve our conflict. Such an effort will not only prevent peace today, but by hardening Palestinian positions, it could prevent peace for decades to come, and it will also contribute greatly to the effort to delegitimize Israel. There is one more fact that I would like to state today, when once again the values of Israel's democracy are under attack. In a free society, it is not a self-appointed few who are the conscience of a nation. In a democracy, the people are sovereign, and the nation's values are reflected in its freely chosen leaders, protected by independent courts, and preserved by checks and balances. In a world of fiction, Israel's democracy is in imminent danger. In the world of fact, Israel has maintained its highest values under the most challenging conditions, and Israel's democratic institutions, including a free and vibrant press remains as strong as ever. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is times like this when the world predictably rushes to defame and demonize Israel that I am proudest to serve Israel.
Because despite being the most maligned country on earth, Israel is the most remarkable country on earth. Not, not perfect, but remarkable. With a people who are moral and compassionate, with soldiers who are brave and decent, with institutions that are sound and resilient, and with a prime minister that I know is as determined as ever to secure Israel's future. Someone once said that if the story of Israel were submitted as a movie script, it would be rejected for being too fantastic to believe. After all, the restoration of sovereignty in our ancestral homeland after 2,000 years, the return of the exiles of our people from across the globe, the defense of Israel against implacable enemies, and the transformation of Israel from a desert backwater to a global technological power seems to defy both history and logic. But ladies and gentlemen, Israel is not a work of fiction. Israel is a real country, and the people in Israel are real people. So, so whether you are citizens who live in Israel, a soldier who defends Israel, a friend who supports Israel, or a paper privileged to cover Israel, let's all remember how fortunate we are to live at a time when the Jewish people are once, once again writing our own story in our own land and once again determining our own future. Thank you.